My name's David, and the chronological Bible reading for October 13th is Matthew 12, verses 22 through 50, and Luke 11. A house divided cannot stand. When the Pharisees accused Jesus of doing his miracles by the authority of Beelzebul, they were projecting their own actions and their source of power. This is what the enemy does. He accuses others of doing what he himself is guilty of. He instigated the fall of mankind by planting a seed of doubt within Eve so that she could not trust God, that God wasn't really good, and that what God had said was not true. Jesus modeled the love and power of the Most High God, and he performed miracles by the Spirit of God. The religious people who did not know God were unwilling to recognize their own need to repent, and as a result, they accused and maligned and tried to kill the very Son of God. The same thing is happening in the political realm in 2024 as some people cannot fathom that God might want to use somebody like a Donald Trump because they've already made up their mind that Trump is a bad person. They're agreeing with everything negative said about him, whether it's true or not. The same way some people accused Jesus, people today are accusing everyone who disagrees with them politically or theologically or on some other front. Jesus tried to help them understand that they should not judge on appearances or on rumors, but they should make a determination based on the outcomes of what people do. A tree is known by its fruit, Jesus said. An evil person produces evil things, but a good person produces good things. The religious elite of the day did not like what Jesus was saying because his words showed that they needed to repent in some areas. Many today want to accuse those whom they view as their opponents of all kinds of sins and all kinds of evil, but look at what they've actually done and make a righteous judgment. Is there a church leader or Bible scholar who is saying things you don't like? What's the fruit of their ministry or their teachings? Are people growing? Are people becoming holier and wiser? Or are they still trapped in repetitive sin because they're immature? Jesus was trying to help people understand that they had a significant problem in the way they were thinking. They needed to change the way they evaluated different situations. In the middle of this conversation, he begins talking about how when an unclean spirit is cast out of a person, it makes a decision to go back to the person from which it came. It then takes with it seven other spirits more evil than itself, and the end state of that person is worse than it began. Jesus is talking about demon possession that stems from wrong thinking. Notice the context and how these dialogues all fit together. If someone is believing a lie and they get delivered from that lie, but they're unwilling to change their mindset and be humble, they will succumb to even worse possession and oppression in the spiritual realm than they had been in the beginning. In Luke 11, after teaching them how to pray in verse 5, Jesus goes on to give a parable about persistence in prayer. We have to keep in mind this is not a license to continually beg God for whatever you want, but it does clearly show us that God loves to give good gifts to his children. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks will find and the one to who and the door will be opened to the one who knocks verse 13 clarifies that this is not about material possessions jesus clearly states if you know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will the heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him how your heart responds to this verse tells a lot about your spiritual maturity. Many Christians who are spiritually immature will be disappointed to learn that Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit and not dollars. He also goes on to teach the people about being intentional regarding what we focus on. The eye is the lamp of the body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is also full of light. But when the eye is bad, your body is full of darkness. 
He is stating here that we must be careful what we give our attention to. We have to make a righteous judgment when it comes to what we allow in through our eye gates. Jesus said, take care then that the light in you is not darkness. Many people listening to and evaluating Jesus' words were believing lies and they did not know it. They thought they had allowed the light of the truth inside of them, but they were believing the darkest lies of the pit of the enemy. As he was teaching on this subject, a Pharisee invited him over to eat. Jesus accepted the invitation, but it led to offense because Jesus didn't wash his hands before dinner. He did this intentionally so that he could teach the Pharisee, you guys clean the outside of the cup, but the inside is still dirty. Why are you so focused on the physical instead of the spiritual? The Pharisees brought judgment on themselves for tithing what was convenient, but neglecting justice and love for God. Note that Jesus was willing to go to this man's home and dine with him, but he was uncompromising when it came to tolerating religious hypocrisy. Woe to you, Pharisees, Jesus denounced. You love the front seat in the synagogues. You guys are like tombs full of dead men's bones and you don't even know it. This offended the religious law experts and one of them was bold enough to let Jesus know that they felt insulted by these words. Jesus responded, woe to you also. It's far more loving to offend someone with the truth than to fear their offense and so let them continue down the path to hell. These men in their religious studies and teachings were creating burdens for people that led them far away from fellowship with God. Religious rules will always lead people away from relationship with the Most High. They created for themselves a framework that makes themselves rich while enslaving the people and benefiting no one spiritually. Jesus did the opposite. He laid down his own life. He didn't benefit in regard to this world by his own ministry. We must beware the teachers and the ministry leaders who get rich from doing ministry. As Jesus was saying these things, the scribes and the Pharisees began to oppose him and try to find fault with anything he said. They were trying to trap him in his words because they were not interested in understanding what he was trying to say. This is just like many people today who will never listen to an opposing viewpoint, but will only listen to respond. We as people who are Jesus followers need to learn to ask more questions and listen intently to what people are saying so that we understand. True humility listens while arrogance only defends and resists. Let us be a people who are humble so God will give us grace. And may he give you much grace, my friends. God bless you. May he fill you with his spirit. Thank you for being on this journey with me through the word of God in 2024. We'll see you tomorrow.